Welcome to my exploratory presentation. My name is Jamesia Jones and I've decided to discuss the ancient Mesopotamia and China civilization. During this presentation, I will be covering the following topics. What makes a society great? Compare and contrast the achievements of the two civilizations I chose to speak on. My personal opinions of the criteria for a great civilization. And lastly, what ways do the 21st century ideas differ from the two chosen civilizations? And of course, at the end of my presentation, I will also include a reference page. What makes a society great? I chose to start off with defining the word society. There are a plethora of definitions out there. However, these two stood out to me the most. Society can be defined as a social organism possessing a harmony of structure and function. It also can be defined as a concept used to describe the structured relations and institutions among a large community of people, which cannot be reduced to a simple collection of individuals. Now, as I began my research, I came across an article published by the New Statesman on behalf of Web Memorial Trust, which I will reference, so you all are welcome to view this article if you so desire. In this article, the author listed five principles of good society, which I thought sums up what I was thinking already. As you notice to the left of the definitions, I actually listed six items, with number one being having a community. We need people. We all are aware that a community is the foundation of a society, hopefully and preferably living in peace and harmony. Number two, having a decent basic standard of living. And that's just simply eliminating poverty. Number three and four, being secure and free to choose how to lead our lives, developing potential and flourishing materially and emotionally. In other words, it's just figuring out what each individual can do and giving everyone in that community a task. And it also enables people to live as they want with a healthy mental, physical, and spiritual state of being. Number five and six, they're pretty explanatory. Participating, contributing, and treating all with care and respect and building a fair and sustainable future for the next generation, which is very important. And as I mentioned before, there is one underlying concept that links these principles more than any other, and that's the ideal of a community. All right, guys, I'm gonna start with the ancient Mesopotamian civilization. Now, Mesopotamia is considered the cradle or the beginning of civilization. Now, at first glance, it does not look like an ideal place for civilization to flourish because it is normally very, very hot, very dry, and has very little rainfall. Now, however, the snow from the mountaintops normally, you know, it melts and then it, it creates floods. And this became known as an annual flooding. Now, the floods will deposit something called silt which is known as fertile, rich soil. Now this soil will flow to the banks of the rivers every year. And this is why Mesopotamia is part of the Fertile Crescent. Now, as we learn in class, Sumerians were the first people to migrate to Mesopotamia and they created a great civilization. They built cities along the rivers and made advances in technology, such as the wheel, which you can see here in the picture, the plow, and the writing system, which is a system that we call the cuneiform. Now, as you can tell, like these are still prevalent in today's society. And I inserted a picture here with the wheels, as you can see how it upgrades and it, you know, it advances to modern day technology. They also created levees, and this was to hold back floods from their fields, and they cut canals, which is known as irrigation as well. Um, they cut these canals to channel the river water to their fields because they still wanted the fertile soil, but they just didn't want it to flood their crop. All right, let's move to the ancient China civilization, which so happened to be one of my favorite civilizations because these um, people in this civilization are very, very intellectual and they came up with a lot of inventions which have a lasting impact on the entire world. 
Now, they invented a numerous of um, different items, as I noted before, and they were famous for their top inventions, sometimes called the four great inventions of ancient China. And these inventions included gunpowder, paper, printing, and the compass. Now, as we all know, these are very, very prevalent in today's world. Okay, and here are a few other inventions and technologies that the ancient China civilization achieved. Um, matches, umbrella, kites, porcelains, air balloons, wheelbarrows, um, iron castings, and over here um, to the left, acupunctures. This is actually something that I would love to try. I've only heard good things about that. <laughs> um, porcelains, I'm not sure if I said that, but um, over here to the right, um, we would call that a vase, but it's called a porcelain. And also, um, amongst just some other things that's not shown here on this slide. So this is an obvious contrast to Mesopotamia, but in comparison, both civilizations invented prevalent and impactful items to the modern world. Okay, moving on to the criteria for a great civilization, in my own opinion. Now, there are many factors that result in a civilization becoming great. A great civilization must firstly, in my opinion, have an efficient government. Now, we know the government has a tremendous job. And just to name a few, um, protecting against invasions of enemies, regulations of trade, labor specializations, agriculture, setting laws to ensure peace of the civilization, and many more. And the, um, the civilization should also be self-sustaining. And that's just been able to prosper on its own. It must have natural resources, a constant water supply that can keep sufficient food for the individuals that resides here. It must have a geographical location, a good geographical location. And I think also um, a significant aspect of a civilization should have a religion base, should be religion based. Although it gives priests a certain sense of power, to me, it is still an important spiritual source of faith, hope, and security. Also, a great civilization must have a social structure. Now, this could be a social class, social roles, anything of that sort, anything to me that I feel will keep the people organized. You know, you have to have an organized system or things could get a little chaotic. And lastly, um, which probably should have been first, <laughs> the, a great civilization should have a form of communicating. Writing or language, any of those would suffice. Okay, so I know my time is fastly approaching. However, this is my last slide and I would like to go over this final question. How does the 21st century ideas differ from the two civilizations that I chose? So um, I thought about this question for a while and I thought that these quotes could better express my perception of this question. So basically, the two quotes are as follows. Lamps are different, but light is the same. We look up at the same stars and see such different things. So essentially, I was thinking that from the ancient times until now, everything is the same. The ideas, the knowledge, the only thing that's different is the mindset, the perception, and the technologies are, are just a little more advanced. So that's my view on this, and I am done with my presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, feel free to leave any comments, and I will be happy to respond, and my reference page is on the next slide. Thank you.